ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत कला दशवस कौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय श्रीमद भागवतम की जय शिल प्रभुपाद की जय जय Okay, I think we are here some. Hare Krishna, Rasa Stali Mata Ji. Good morning. Hare Krishna. Good morning, everyone. Mm, Taruni Radha, you finished reading yesterday, and is it somewhere here? I'm not able to see. I don't know why. Something's going on with my YouTube. Oh oh. Uh, so study Mataji, do you remember where we stopped exactly? Because the marker, I'm not able to find that marker. Okay, all the three deities came. Remember, that's where we stopped. Somewhere where all the three. Okay, yeah, here. I said. Yeah. If you open the page, you know, it is somewhere in the middle. We just stopped at the middle. Yeah, but yesterday I was using my phone. Today I'm using my computer. That's why when the, the confusion happens. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it. But anyway, yeah. I'm not able to see. Yeah, I'm not able to it see. It was the last line, I think. It was the last line, not this page. Can You're you sharing the other one. Why I'm not able? Oh, yeah, I can see. One minute, I will. Um, Adhyansha also we finished. Yeah, you're no, right. we have finished this portion, Mataji. Yes, we yes, have finished this portion. We are supposed to start ah, the another yes, portion. Yes, yes. Please yeah. listen. Please listen. I said that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rajesh, Radhika, Madhuji, would you like to get us started? Uh. Murti lay back, exhausted from the heavens. Symphonic music celebrated the birth of her two sons, and rose petals fell from the sky. Dharma, who had been pacing up and down outside the birthing room, flung open the door and rushed in. Murti lifted her head, smiling broadly, hearing a chorus of Vedic hymn. She glanced past him to see throngs of chanting sages, each beaming with joy. She lay her head back on her pillow as the jubilant Dharma cradled each son. From outside the room, the sounds of merriment and song, song resounded. Muti looked quizzically at Dharma. He laughed. All the Gandharvas, Kinnas, and Apsaras known that the Supreme Lord has appeared as our son. There is a great celebration outside. How do they know? Dharma smiled. All mm. signs of good fortune are visible. Okay, let's pause there. This reminds us of the exact opposite mood of the situation, but there were also the signs of all bad omens when Duryodhana was born. When Duryodhana was born, there were jackals howling and then there were asses braying and all kinds of inauspicious omens were happening. And so people knew that there is something terrible taking place. Um, see, all these omens are all the way of Virata Rupa or the form of Krishna to indicate to us if you know what we are doing is auspicious or not. Um, We must, we must be vigilant, careful to not become sentimental. Like there has to be a balance between uh, being aware of Krishna's hand. You know, sometimes we want to do something. There's so many obstacles and things just don't go that way. And, and then we struggle and we struggle. But if it's a material thing, you know, I will, today I have to give class uh, for the Russian devotees and uh, it's about Shamantaka Jewel pastime. And you know, the whole, the Shamantaka jewel is actually a material thing. Although it gave all good fortune, it was 
bringing uh, wealth to whoever uh, whoever it went to and it was bringing protection it was giving strength power fame all those things but still it's a material thing and um fortune you know it's like depending on our level of consciousness we see things as fortunate or unfortunate but for a devotee of course you know the association of devotees and virtues uh, that is actual opulence Mm. So what was my main point? My main point is that we must have a balance between uh, auspicious and inauspicious. Sometimes we may become sentimental. Indian conditioning is to think that, oh, this is good, this is bad, but everything in this material world is bad, <laughs> right? See the see the story of Shamantaka Jewel, right? It was like such a probably it's the most complicated story of Srimad Bhagavatam most complicated because there are so many people involved and so many uh, complexities of dilemmas and, and greed and all this kind of uh, takes that story into a complex dimension. Uh, so we need to be careful because otherwise, um, like like how the Shamantaka Jewel became the object of conflict and um, uh, Kali Yuga's uh, you know, development it became the cause because of thinking of good fortune, bad fortune. Um, so we must be like aware of when whenever we are when our consciousness is leaning towards uh, praising Krishna, glorifying Krishna, like Uddhava does always, right? The only way where we could make the difference between Uddhava and Krishna was that Uddhava was always singing glories of Krishna. When he opens his mouth, you know that it's not Krishna because he would always glorify Krishna. So that's actual auspiciousness, all actual good fortune. So um, for some people, they may notice that, oh, good fortune everywhere. There's kirtan going on and everybody around is thinking of Krishna. That's good fortune for those who are in the planet, planet, platform of Shuddha Sattva. Somebody is in the Rajogun. They think good fortune means all the Shamantaka Jewel type of um, uh, ad- attractions, which is on the platform of giving pleasure now but will give misery later so we think of acquiring we think of possessing objects and things and fame and name that's like in the matter mode of passion fortunate and then uh, in the mode of ignorance yeah we think that like tangible objects like in uh, um like dravya dravya shakti objects we we, try, we depend on objects to give us a feeling of good fortune but no, we, we need to work on our consciousness to see what is fortunate, what is not. And for women, we are more lucky because we have that internal uh, intuitive uh, ability. You know, even Srila Prabhupada said we are naturally more devotional. We see more women around in religious functions than men. So we have that natural tendency to do fortunate things that bring us fortune, such as pujas and, you know, gatherings which glorify the Lord, etc. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point about fortune, good fortune. Any questions or comments? Okay, otherwise we can continue reading. Um, uh, Rasastali Mataji, would you like to take uh, read, us, read us through a little bit? Okay. Even as this spoke, the two infants grew quickly in the manner of the celestials. Within the minutes, they were children and Dharma offered them clothes. Just then Brahma walked in, followed by the chief gods, and they offered prostrated obedience to the boys. Standing up, they folded their hands and Brahma said, we offer our respects to Dharma's sons. They are the supreme person from whom the cosmos has emanated and in whom it rests as air and clouds rest in space. They will be renowned as the divine sages Nara and Narayana. The gods exclaimed, praise to the Nara and Narayana. Jai! Dharma's effulgent sons continued growing until they achieved adulthood. Brahma continued, my lords, your identity is revealed in the Vedic literatures. Your appearance has created peace and prosperity and destroyed all worldly calamities. Kindly glance on us, gods, with your lotus petal eyes. 
which deride the beauty of the spotless lotus where Lakshmi resides. Okay, let's pause Somewhere here. The pot. Let's pause here. Mm. Wow, I wish human babies were like that. They just grow up in minutes. <laughs> okay. So this is very important historical appearance of Narana Ryan Rishi, and we should remember this background. And Rajasthali uh, Rajeshwari Radhika Mataji will will keep us on track by taking notes and and telling us how to remember. <laughs> okay. Any any questions or points so far? Okay, I can continue. Um, Mataji Taruni Radha, are you able to read? We can all like we all can read a few times or something. Somehow my okay now I read it. Wasn't able to see the thing properly. Now I can see. Oh, Understand okay. all worldly calamities. Kindly glance on us gods with your lotus petal eyes, which deride the beauty of the spotless lotus where Lakshmi resides. Somewhere in the forest, a lion roared. Unperturbed, my dear, threw wood into the fire and continued speaking. My mm -hmm. dear, when the lords, when the gods offered their prayers, Nara and Narayana glanced over them with great mercy. After touching the feet of their mother and father, they departed for Ganda Matana Mountain. They are both full incarnations of, are they both full incarnations of Krishna? Asked Vidura. Nara is a partial manifestation of Krishna and Narayana is the Lord himself. They have appeared in the dynasties of Kuru and Yadu respect, respectively as Arjuna and Krishna to mitigate the earth's burden. I have now named all descendants of Dharma's 13 wives who were Daksha's daughters. Vidra asked Maitreya to describe the descendants of Daksha's other daughters. Maitreya said, Swaha has um, 14th, 14th daughter, Swaha, his 14th daughter, married Agni, the fire god. Together, they had three sons, Pavaka, Pavamana, and Suchi, whose food is the oblations offered in the sacrificial fires. From these three sons, another 45 fire gods were born, including the grandfather, Agni, and their three fathers. There are 49 fire gods. Vidra said, so many? How are they all... <laughs> How are they enough offering for them all? So as long as there is sacrifice, Vedic sacrifices which are happening, they're getting their nourishment, right? And once yeah. those Vedic sacrifices will stop, then they will also stop giving rains, and that's how the earth will become very hot. And exactly. I mean, I know that like, everything will start like that only, right? The global warming will start. <laughs> now also it's happening, right? It's kind of like um. We, there is so much of kirtan happening all around the world in, in our Hare Krishna temples and all. Still, like the way the temperature is increasing, the global, global warming, it's kind of like sometimes, per, you know, it perplexes my mind. Um, yeah. Well, we might not be doing sacrifices, but even yagna, the Sankirtan yagna is also one of the best yagnas in Kali Yuga, right? I'm also thinking about that. I mean, so I'm, I'm just thinking if. If imagine we were told just do Sankirtan Yagya, it will feed you. Don't eat rice, dal, sabji. So probably these demigods, they're, uh, yeah, on one level it is Sankirtan Yagya for the pleasure of the Lord and for the pleasure of the devotional aspect of the demigods, etc. But at the same time, I don't think it fulfills the Vedic ritualistic aspect of the ablations and the yagyas that were performed, etc. In Kali Yuga, you know, even demigods need to be, um, how do you say, uh, need to be satisfied with uh, Harinam Sankirtan, etc. But I think there is some sort of uh, uh, Kali Yuga connection with all the demigods um, becoming less and less like... Um, Hmm, merciful, I don't know. I don't know if I can call it merciful or I can call it, as you said, capable of providing all those things to humans. So all these things will start, right? Drought and famine and um, um, what is this thing which we just had, like this COVID? 
all this kind of diseases and uh, lack of rain and grains not growing, all these kind of things are a result of not performing. Mm, I'm not a hundred percent sure if if uh, Sankirtan Yagya is, is a separate thing and without these Yagyas being performed like oblations in the fire type of Yagyas specifically for them, I'm not sure if that affects and if that is the cause that in Kali Yuga, even though even though there will be many, many um, uh, Sankirtan, uh, growth of Sankirtan, uh, still there will be also Kali Yuga's degradation where people are going to become more and more bereft of basic necessities. So I'm just wondering if it is like that, like, like Parikshit Maharaj is not feeling hungry, thirsty, but how many times we ate and we slept and we uh, bathed and clothed and do, did all sorts of things but while reading this first four, three cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. And all this time, Parikshit Maharaj has not eaten even once. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, uh, unless we are on that level. But but this is a Yuga Dharma. This is the Kali Yuga Yuga Dharma is Harinam Sankirtan. So there's no other way, right? Kalahu nastyaiva, 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 gatiranyata. Who is, see, then the second question arises. Who is even qualified to do those kind of yagyas? Like previous ages. Nowadays, all these pandits and all, they don't even have the qualification to do it. For example, my astrology guru, um, there is a whole procedure somebody has to do an Arshinga Yagya, they must have chanted for 10-12 years, dedicated um, different different levels of Narshinga mantras and Sudarshana mantras and they must have attained Siddhi. Then only they can actually, into the oblation, they can actually call upon the, the particular deity of Sudarshana or Narsimha. Um, by anybody, random pujari, just, um, just because the, they know the mantras, it's not that the deity will appear. So most of these yagyas we are doing are also very much like we meaning uh, the world is doing. So many people are doing all sorts of yagyas. How the Ganesh will suddenly come if they do Ganesh yagya? Or they, how these things will Sudarshana or Narsimha yagya? Simply namesake they say, I got to know because I come from this uh, parampara, sampradaya, Sri Vaishnava lineage and I have seen even me, even to learn astrology I had to do um, Hayagriva mantras for five years and then I had to do Sudarshana mantras and you know, there are Araha mantras, there are so many mantras to pass the levels of um, gaining the mercy of the Lord that when I, like for example, when I do a reading or something, I call upon the mercy of that deity, but it's not just like, oh, I know that mantra, it's something that I had to chant for five years and get Siddhi of that particular mantra. Then when I call upon Hayagriva, then he gives me the knowledge and then I become the instrument and then the knowledge flows through me and all that. But same, similarly also with um, Yagyas and all, there's a lot of uh, inauthenticity or like a lot of quacks, you can say. They just learned one mantra one time, but they may not actually have the spiritual potency to invite those deities to actually appear. You know, what's the speak of appearance of Nashingadev or something? But in Kali Yuga, when we chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it is guaranteed that Krishna will definitely respond. Even if it is Nama Bhasa, right? Even if it is on the stage, we are not 100% pure. Still, that's everything. Holy name gives everything in Kali Yuga. So that's why you know, a lot of people ask me about wearing gemstones and all as remedy. <clears throat> and I tell them that you don't know how to wear that trick. There's so many procedures, you have to wear it on a specific nakshatra. You have to have a pure stone which has no, not, not even a single flaw, like a dot or a crack or anything. And it needs to be a certain weight and everything. And then it needs to be chanted with certain, certain mantras to actually empower that stone to be able to become a remedy stone. And then you wear it in a way that it tugged, the, the water that flows on it, like the rays that fall on that stone will fall on your skin directly through it. And so many methods are there. And then every week, if you're wearing, say, Jupiter stone, you have to wash that stone with Ganga water and, and raw milk and everything and recite certain mantras of purifying. Otherwise, if people just keep wearing the same gem, gemstone for years and years, uh, it will attract the negativity, but immediately it will also dispel the same negativity to the person that's wearing it. 
So this is a simple concept on the mundane level of grahas, right? Planets and how if you really want their mercy, you need to do it properly. This is something I studied, I know. Similar with the yagyas. Who is qualified to actually do these yagyas to uh, ahutis in a way that really can call upon the demigods and appease them and everything and everything? It's like Kali Yuga is becoming so manda sumanda matayo. People are so unintelligent. They're going after all sorts of... Anybody who says they're doing yagya, they go. But who knows if the really demigods are pleased with it. They, are, they can be pleased with bhakti. There are devotee, devotees of Ganesh and Shiva. They may not follow like proper procedural Vedic rituals, but they may call out to them in, with, with uh, devotion. And that personal relation may be there. But I'm saying on a, this is all professional level to please the demigods through this kind of yagyas is professional level. Personal level, Harinam, Sankirtan, yes, we are all uh, protected in that way. But um, professional level, who is even qualified to? I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, just like so amazing. Never ever thought about what you were told, especially with respect to like, you know, um, people doing so many different yagnas. And we are mm -hmm. thinking like, yeah, we have done like, you know, yeah, yeah, that's another thing, right? That's another thing. We think that, oh, now, you know, I have uh, controlled the, the demigod by doing by throwing some uh, grains and some uh, fruits and flowers. Now, you know, everything is going to be auspicious for me without even understanding what is actually auspiciousness. <laughs> Getting a proper qualified... Um... Um, person who pandit. does the to do the yeah pandit to do the yarna that should be our main criteria right for every yes. for every ritual that we are doing even for marriage or anything correct if it's I not mean, the correct person who's just behind like say money then it's not like it's, whatever we are thinking it's being done it's not no it's not the right thing to it, no? yeah. I mean we are looking at these um sages na even kardama or we're seeing all these sages atri and dharma actually they were the yajamanas it means they were performing these yagyas which means they would chant who knows months and months they would chant a specific mantra and then they'll do that yagya and then they have appeased that deity they established a connection with that deity and you know it's it's a it's a process it's a beautiful relational process Mm. And nowadays is like, oh, you just pay 50,000 rupees and then four brahmanas will come. Who knows if those brahmanas have chanted or just watched TV all day. They may just come and blabber the mantra during the procedure and that's why, that's why we should not like depend on all that and we should depend on the holy name. But the holy name is like, you know you have chanted. You know you have strung your beads and you know you have sat in the Harin Kirtan and sang it. You know it. But all the, the Yajmanas, we don't know if they've done it. Most people don't even, even I, many, many years ago, I didn't know that Yagya needs to be performed by people who have Siddhi of that specific mantra. Then only actually the deity will appear or um, give the full benefit. But most of these people, unless they're coming from authentic Sampradayas and um, properly trained, etc., it's all a professional business nowadays. And all the time. So each and every word has to be pronounced properly. That is also very important. I think in this age of Kali Yoga, we got the concession. <laughs> so there is nothing pure, not a people, not the consciousness. So they cannot uh, get... Actually, that mantra should be chanted in a, some uh, different uh, lay, I think they have different tone to recite mm -hmm. that mantra. Because I heard in one lecture, uh, the children, those who are learning the shloka in a group pool, they have to perform in a certain way. And they, afterwards, they feel so hungry because a lot of energy required to mm -hmm. chant those mantras. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, remember the Vritrasura and the Indra story. One little mistake in the yeah. pronunciation and then the enemy of Indra. Indra, you know, Shatru. <laughs> exactly. 
So in Kali Yuga, how we can depend on those things? As Rajeshwari Radhika said, I love that word, concession. We are in the ambulance, you know. <laughs> we are in the ambulance and then no traffic rules are applying. We're just going forward because of Harina, you know, because of the chanting of the holy name. Kind of disheartening also. <laughs> and then kind of like to take shelter of what is pure. That's how I'm feeling. And uh, like you, you were saying, the point was um, when people think that, oh, I'm doing this yagya, you know, I've done it. I've done my part of spiritual life. That is not spiritual life. You know, there is uh, you know, different levels of um, advancement or like keeping the law. One is a legal level of law. Another is a moral level of law. And then there's a spiritual laws, right? And people think that, oh, I've done this yagya, you know, I've given some pandit some money. I've uh, appeased the, the persons and then they think that their part is done. No, our part will be done only if we become part of Mahaprabhu's movement and, and spread the holy name and preach. That's actual spiritual responsibility we have. On a moral level, okay, yeah, we may be like uh, following the, you know, doing some dharma, and etc. You know, like little bit of... Um, charity and things like that on a legal level even that nobody cares like whether you're giving charity or not what government is going to come and arrest you or what if you're not doing charity they don't care so you may be a good citizen legally right but then morally you may not actually be advancing at all because you're not giving charity etc so that's why these vedic principles help us to remain humans but spiritual principles we as as rajeshwari adhika said concession because we are in this Mahaprabhu's movement, there is concession. Okay, you may not be able to do this, you can't do that, you don't even know what is Yajna, you don't know how to do. Fine, you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and you get everything. Even that, <laughs> we hesitate. <laughs> even that we struggle. Hmm. You know, Prabhupada minimized it to, I mean, he minim sorry, he made it to 16 rounds minimum it was his contribution it's you know it's very 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 minimum and i struggle even to chant that so like even with concession we are struggling we like to we like to put it on somebody else you know chanting hare krishna is our responsibility you know we have to chant with attention it's more more responsibility you know but oh, we uh, 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 oh, some fire, you know, some tangible thing happening in front of you, fire burning in front of you, and then you know the, some mantras which you don't know are being recited. I mean, you meaning I'm saying hypothetical, you the people of the world. Then they think that is spiritual, but they're not willing to do the emotional offering with our even with our own emotions. We can please Krishna much more than hiring brahmanas and doing things like that. Actually, nothing is pure nowadays. Uh, okay. Even the mental level, we are committing so much, but we got the, you know, again the concession that we are not getting the, you know, if we offend mentally, we are not get the uh, result of that. So it's like it's mainly that you know uh, we have to work on our mental level, the consciousness that yes. how we can keep it pure in this age. So we, when we will chant afterwards, then it will give you more like, you know, the purity and the strength. Absolutely. Okay, we will stop here for today. Thank you very much. I need to go. I've still not given the garland for Darshan Arti. So I'm going now and then I'm going to give class and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good night, Taruni Radha. 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 Good night,